If you go to Walmart, you got product all over the shelves. You got you got pages and pages of barcodes and prices. Who knows that's true? Mm -hmm. But when you look at the store of humanity, every head costs the same. Mm. Every head costs the same. Oh, mm. Now the only reason every head can cost the same is because it has the same value. Right. Amen. Somebody didn't cost more blood than the other. We all cost the blood of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if God paid the same price for you all the way across the board, then to him, everybody must have the same value. Amen. Come on. Right. Now we're not taught that growing up. We're taught there's high life, low life. There's winners, losers, there's important people, and there's people that don't matter at all. That's not true with the Lord. And the only reason that's true in life is because we weigh ourselves through life and by life and compare ourselves to another. So, so the reason I'm so excited about what CJ preached, and, and, and Lee's heart, Lee's heart is, I heard it today, it, it was really exciting, I really enjoyed meeting you, talking to you. And his passion, I said, I love your passion. He said, I'm trying to be tame, so <laughs> he doesn't do tame well. <laughs> he actually tried to tell me he was trying to be tame. <laughs> See how they're all my ears, and he don't know tame. No, I can hear the passion in his heart, and that's good. good. The passion is good because you have passion for something. And, but it was that unity, that oneness, that we could just see ourselves as His. Yeah. So, so here's the point about all being the same value, because that sounds more like motivational speaking, but I want to put clarity to it, and I want to swim up with everything CJ said and, and, and tell you why it is that way. And, and Come on. Yeah. Let's do it this way. Go to, go to Genesis 1 with me, would you? Yeah. we all cross the blood of Jesus is because we were all created for the same reason. Pay attention carefully and let's get this because these guys came up and poured their heart out and this is like a triple tag team thing so now yeah. I'm going to tie this thing up. I, wanna, I just want to explain why what they said was so true. We're on the earth for a reason guys. Amen. God made men with intention yeah. and with purpose. Yeah? yeah? You'll find in that book in verse 27, he made man for his image. Yeah. He's not talking about a head, arms, legs, because God's a spirit. God doesn't have a head, arms, and legs. He's a spirit. He had to give Jesus a head, arms, and legs to pay the price for head, arms, and legs, man. But God's a spirit. He's not talking about when he says image, he's not talking about what he looks like. That's why the whole room's different. That's why we all look different. And that's caused a problem in the earth because we focus on that. Now it's who's who and who's ain't, and who looks the best and who don't, and everybody's striving from a young age to meet a certain whatever. Yeah. And there's undue pressure on people because now it's all about outward appearance instead of who we are from the inside. Right. That's right. When God makes man for his image, he makes man for who he is. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a that's why there's a line down there when CJ's preaching, it's it either is him or it isn't him. It's either God or it's not. Okay. And, and that's straight truth. Yeah, yeah. And we'd, we'd all do well to get that and not compromise and yell but our way around that. Come on. Yeah. We'd all really do good to just say, you know what? God made me for a reason and I need to go after that reason. I need to search that out and see that for myself in my own heart and understand that I'm here for a reason. When God said, let us make man for his image, he's talking about who he is. Who he is, not what he looks like. Yeah. Come on. I'll go have fun with you, man. Stand up. Come on. <laughs> you on purpose. Turn around. What's your name? Avery. Avery. I'm Dan and he's Avery. Now watch this. If I was part of this house, you would not mix us up. You would not walk up to Avery and say, hey, Dan. Oh, sorry, man. You're not Dan, are you? you no, know, I'm Avery. I'll always get you two mixed up. <laughs> hey, <laughs> For obvious reasons, that ain't happening. <laughs>
There's so much difference between us in so many ways. Watch this. We don't look anything alike. We can't look anything alike. We'll never look alike. But we can both look like him. Amen. 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 We can both look like him, live like him, live like him. And that's what makes Avery and I one. And that's what makes us brothers. And that's what makes us work Man, that's good. the blood of Jesus. Because he ain't just re redeeming Avery. And he ain't just redeeming Dan. He's redeeming God in us. Amen. And that image is being restored. So we don't look nothing alike. But we can look just like him. Are you with me? So God makes man for his image. Watch this. See, and us guys, it's good I got all you guys lined up right here. We've been taught our whole lives with the idea, without saying it, that this is weakness, like love is weakness. Forgiveness is weakness. It ain't macho, it's weakness. It's weakness. You're telling me Jesus is weakness? He's the living epistle of love. He, he knows where you've been, he knows what you've done, and he's never let your actions change his mind about who he created you to be and why you're here. That's not weakness. That's God. Because his love never fails. So he sees you for what he created you to be, not what you've been. Amen. Now that doesn't mean what you've been is cool. That doesn't mean you continue to take it like, oh, well, God won't change his mind about me. I'll just go, no, no, no. The thing is, you'll never be complete, fulfilled. You'll never store treasures in heaven. You'll never fulfill why you're here unless you begin to live in the Lord what he created you. That's why this message is so important. And I just like the way you brought it, man, because not many people, see, I'm not accountable to myself. I tell people, I don't need you to call me and check up on me. I understand with addiction, sometimes you need somebody to walk you through a season. Yeah. Yeah. But if I always need you to call me to make yeah. sure I'm okay, I need to look at my heart and say, where am I, man? Yeah. Like, like, at what point am I my best accountability partner? Because yeah. yeah. I look me in the mirror. I got to live with me. I sleep with me. I wake up with me. Yeah. And if I'm going to love my neighbor as myself and don't even like me, I can't even do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's right. How you gonna love your neighbor as yourself when you don't even like yourself? No wonder you're having trouble liking anybody. You don't even like you. So you're liking your neighbor the way you see you is the eye you look for. Oh, man. <laughs> There's some laws and principles here, man. The first commandment, the greatest commandment, is love God with all your heart, with all your strength. You love God with everything you are. We already know you ain't gonna love you first. You got to see first love too. Yeah. This ain't the first commandment that you're just gonna okay. I need to start loving God. We got to understand that God never changed his mind about you, friend. Ever. That on your darkest day, he didn't lose sight of what he created you to be. And that Jesus hung on a cross and died and looked forward to something. He looked ahead. He despised his day and saw the day that you could be forgiven in his spirit. You come back in sight. You follow what I'm saying. That's why we all cross the chain in this room. Amen. Listen carefully to this. This is scriptural to me. You said salvation is come to, to how many? To all oh, men. Oh, right. To all men. Watch this. Everybody in this room has the same value to God. Because we can all walk in the light as he's in the light. We can all walk in love. We can all wake up to shine. He said you're the light of the world. He didn't say most of you are the light of the world. You're all called to be the light of the world. He paid a price to get that light, which is his life. He's the light of men. To get that light back inside of us. And ain't nobody lights a lamp and puts a basket. Come on. So it would be frivolous to just pray a prayer to go to heaven. Come on, I'm like, we have so step baby. We just make the whole gospel about Jesus dying on the cross for me to get forgiven so I go to heaven when I die. If you don't live what he paid for, you're living as if you're dead anyway. You're living in unforgiveness. You're living in offense. You're living in compromise. You're just as good as living dead anyway. Yes, come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord, Dan. Yes. Come on. Come on. He did not pay a price to just take me to heaven when I die. It's not a destination. Come on. Eternal life is a relationship with God the Father. Who's eternal. Who's never going to die. Who you're going to live with forever. Because you're not going to. Nobody's going to snatch you out of the of his hand. And what it re reveals is he never made man to die. So Jesus restored God's original 
protection. So when he makes man for his image, you look up every tree you can eat, tend it, keep it, but don't eat the tree of knowledge, good and evil. Day you eat the trees, the day you surely die. Well, we all know he ate the tree. And if you read the book, he didn't fall over dead. So something had to die. If God said the day you eat the tree is the day you surely die, but he didn't fall over dead, then what died? Spirit. And people say his spirit died because it sounds spiritual because that's really what happened. But we don't understand what that means. I'll tell you what died. The image. <laughs> the image died. The day you eat the tree is the day you surely die. That means who he was created to be got lost through sin and separation. Now watch this. Pay attention. We know God is glory, majesty, mighty, rock higher than I. God's a lot of things. But everything he does flows out of the lust of who he is and God's love. For God so loved the world. Aren't you glad it doesn't say for God was so frustrated and wits and humanity he finally sent a son? Well, that would be different. That would be a different story. You wouldn't even have the boldness to approach him. But if he was anything like us, that's what it would say. Yeah. Why? Because we weren't born into him. We were born into Adam. We were born into the fall of man. We were born into what Adam became when he got separated from the one that made him for his image. So if God made man in his image and God made man to love, and the day you eat the tree is the day you surely die, then the, then the image, the destiny, the identity of the man seemingly died right in that moment, but it didn't die in the heart of God. Because his love never failed. So let's just paint it this way. So Adam looked like something before that tree. And he looked just like his father. Yeah? But the day he ate the tree is the day he surely So when Adam got separated from God and got cut off from God through his sin, who knows that that happened? He got cut off from the source of love. And the source of life became dead inside and watch. Instead of being love, he became in need of love. Oh, Pay attention with me tonight. Because this is what the gospel is all about. And this is why what he preached is solid. We were all created to love. Not needed, being. And what's messed all of us up is we've all needed love from the time you can remember. Yeah. From the time you were born, you needed identity, purpose, you needed value, you needed to matter, you needed support, stability, you needed somebody to care and act like they cared, you needed to feel like you mattered, that your life was valuable, because nobody on the earth has a clue who they are because they've been separated from God. Yeah. And you can only know who you are in Him. We've tried to find identity through each other, relationships, money, prestige. <coughs> Being noticed from little up, you needed attention. When they laughed, you felt good. When they didn't, you tried to make them laugh more. Because yeah. it made you feel like you mattered. Because everybody's trying to matter. Amen. And when they treat you harsh, you got options. Get hard, get hurt, get broken, get in denial. But no matter how you respond, it's not the real you. It's a survival thing. It's a cat in the corner. It's just you becoming something else that you were never created to be. So they laugh at you in grade school, and you become broken, hurt, and introverted, or you become hard and angry, or you act like it don't matter when you know it matters. <laughs> And it's all filled on the lie. So no matter how you respond, it ain't you. And most people at a very young age are nothing more than how they've responded to what they've been through. And that's why your story matters so much. And that's why you tell it all the time. And that's why it becomes your justification for wherever you're standing. Because if you know what I've been through, and you don't know what it was like, and you don't know the home. And now we all have those stories. But we better have a better answer than just our story. Amen. Because what good does it do to go through the room and find out who's been through the most hell? Yeah. Right. 
No good. Then what? Because <laughs> now you can't even touch that person because you ain't been in their shoes and they won't even let you because you don't understand. Right. <laughs> Come on. So it can't be the answer. So I guess we better go back to the beginning and figure something out. And figure out how this thing started, how it all kicked off. And why are we all here? And let's just get this out of the way. There ain't an accident on the planet. Come on. That's right. He's the author and the giver of life. Right. My Bible says there's a time to be born, and here you sit, friend. Come on. You can feel sorry for yourself. You can make up all that you say, I'm never supposed to be born. Stop it! <laughs> You're here. Oh, no. He's the author and the giver of life. Oh, Amen. And there's a time to be born. Oh, there was about 500 million sperm cells racing to your mother's head. <laughs> you ever figured that one out, biology? <laughs> 500 million chances going for one destiny, and it was you. Uh, you say, I ain't never won nothing in my life. You won. When I look in this book, it was never our life. It was his life living. Amen. And what makes it worth living is when you live it for what it's here for. Come on. <laughs> you say, well, it's my life. It was never your life. From the beginning, it was supposed to be his life in you. Come on. Well, it's my body. I'll do with the one. It was never your body. Come on. It was always created. Your body was always created to be the manifestation of him. Amen. The reason we have this body is because he gave us a vessel to act out what's on the inside. You know them by their fruit. Fruit. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. So all this is, this head, arms, and legs thing, it's just to be a vessel to manifest what's on the inside. We've turned it all into the vessel. We made it all about the vessel. Instead of all about what's on the inside. We compare ourselves upon ourselves. Yeah. That's good. We make fun of people for how they look. Instead of realize who they are and can be. Come on. Are you all with me? Yeah. I just need to change my life. I'm just sharing it with you in the light of what was preached and shared tonight. Like, like that's why it's cut right down the middle. He said, you either for me or you against me. Either gather or you scatter. scatter. You're not just hanging out. You're either in or you're not living in. That doesn't mean you're judging condemned. What he's saying is there's no middle ground. Come on. Why? He never made you or me for you or me. See, what happened was when love got perverted, you flip the coin on love and do the 180 thing. Guess what love becomes when the coin slipped and your 180 love becomes self-centered? Pride, yeah. It's the reason Jesus said, if you come after me, you got to do something first. He didn't say pray for her to go to heaven. No. He said, deny yourself. Why is that first? Because you were never made for you. You are made for his image. What got lost through sin? The image. So Jesus came to remove the sin 
to get the image back. Mm -hmm. So now we take on the life and nature and image of God, but the only way you're going to bear that and bear witness to that is if you deny what? Yourself. No. And understand you were never made for you. Amen. You were made for His great name. You were made to be one with Him. Yeah. You were made to be loved by Him and walk in His love and manifest the truth of who He is Praise in you. your life. Thank you, Lord. So guess what Jesus did? It's something amazing. He's not just the lamb that was slain. He's not just the lamb. He played major roles. Jesus was the lamb. And without him, we couldn't be forgiven. And his shed blood is amazing and speaking better things, right? So who knows that Jesus is the lamb slain? And guess who else he is? The exact representation of the Father. He said, when you see me, you've already seen him. He said, Philip, why are you even saying, show us the Father? You've been hanging out with me all this time. You ain't figured this out. When you see me, it's him. In other words, there ain't nothing I'm doing that he's not. And I ain't doing nothing that he's not. He said, I only came to do the will of him who sent me. So all the loving, all the forgiving. Was he done wrong on the cross? More than we can even imagine. Come on, man. He was done wrong more than we. It's the biggest injustice that will ever be committed on the planet. And he didn't change one lady. He hung there and died because he knows the truth about all of us. And he says, man, if I give my one life, it'll pay the price to redeem all these lives. Yeah. If I can be lifted up, I can draw them in. Yes. I can show them the truth, and the truth will make them free. Come on. The sun sets free. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We have to make sure that we don't make this just about what we can get from it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes, no. no, it's the biggest trap in Christianity. Yes, it's no. just oh, preaching yes. the gospel that serves me yeah. right. instead of changes yes, me. Yes, no. Just preaches the gospel that blesses me. He's not just here to fix things we broke. He's not just here to give you a favor and a blessing and get your family healed up. He does all that yes, stuff. Yes. But he's here to make you what you were created to be yes. in the first place. Amen. So you want to stop there. And you want to run there. And you want to live there. Yes. See? See. Sunday, there's churches everywhere, right? So Sunday, there'll be churches everywhere. And a lot of them are going to get tricked into preaching a message that's just all about us getting something from him. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of Christians using God to get by, survive, get through life. Instead of live their life in Him. Yes, Lord. When you gather like this, it's never about what He can do for us. It's how He can make us more like Him. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. He made man for His image. Yeah. Don't ever forget that. Jesus came and said, I came to save that which was lost. Not you. There was something lost through sin. And it was man's creative value, identity, and purpose. Yeah. That's it. So here's another role Jesus played. He modeled the life that you and I were created for. Oh, come on, Lord. Yes, Lord. He showed us what we can look like filled with the Spirit. Yes. He never said, follow me. He just said, sing to me and pray to me when you're old. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Guess what Jesus said? Follow me. Follow me. Come on, Lord. He said, the things I do, You'll do if you believe. Believe what? Exactly what we're talking about tonight. Amen. Now, if you just come to him, watch this. If you just come to him hoping you quit using, sounds noble. It's not the goal. No. Amen. The goal is not to quit using. The goal is to become the person you were created to be. Come on. And if you step into that identity, you'll actually wonder why you were using. Yes. No, it's true. Every addictive behavior, you can tie it back to a low esteem, a lack of value, and a lost identity. Yeah. If men knew who they were, they wouldn't have lived what they lived. Yeah. If men would see the value of their lives and understand the gospel isn't just because of your sin. The gospel is to restore the truth about you. Yeah. It's not just about your sin. He paid the price of his son to get to you. Yeah. Do you ever stop and think about that? It is about getting forgiven. We have, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. I'm not making a light of sin. Sin damaged things bad. But we all know we've sinned. Yeah. Who's been there? Who knows that? Yeah. So we've got to say there's got to be something more. So if I'm just getting forgiven, does it stop there? No. i got to step into what he created me for. Yeah. That's the purpose of getting lost and forgiven. That's why he says, I'll remember their lawless deeds no more. That makes you clean. 
Yeah. Why would he make us that clean? So we can live as if sin never happened and live apart from its effects and get back to the beginning of why we're here. This house, Holy Spirit, showed me the gospel. Nobody pays a high price for nothing. You want to know us, man? We're two for one. Buffet, all you can eat. You're waiting for seasons to change to get 50, 60% off. Yeah. You buy long sleeve in the spring. Hey. You buy shorts in the fall. Come on, I know it. And when you write the check, you think what you're getting is well worth what you paid. Ain't nobody went and looked at the car that was marked 12 5 and you offered them 15 4. You're trying to get them down to 10 2. Because <laughs> if you write it and pay it, you believe the purchase possession is worth the price. Wow. He shed the blood of his son for you and me. And he believes you're well worth the price. Why? Because he knows what you'll look like when he's in you. And you'll surrender. Come on. So watch this. So watch this. If God made man for his image, and Jesus said, when you see me, you've already seen the Father. But then Jesus told us to follow him, the things we do, but he did it, we'll do also, and greater things, because he goes to the Father. Then who are we supposed to look like? Like him. The Father. So it's all in Scripture. The whole goal of the gospel is all laid out, and we've made it about getting more blessing, protection, provision. People got an attitude with the renting paid, they can't even worship because it's all about them. You got, you got discouraged people that go to church. Because they've been taught it's all about what they can get from God instead of what they become. Because of him. See, nobody owes me a thing. Do you understand? Watch this. Maybe you don't even know this. This is my fourth recovery center since the turn of the calendar 2024. It's my fourth one. It's only what? February? This is my fourth recovery. Now I've been somewhere every weekend, but this is my fourth recovery center. And I was even at a teen ranch for teenage boys. Already this year. Now watch this. I fly myself there. And don't take a penny. Come on. When I leave it. Now, why would anybody pay a price to go stand in front of these men? Why would Jesus hang on the cross? I'm barely doing anything compared to him. I must see what he knew. Say a little bit, it ain't a business because we've been jaded, man. There, there's always something in it for somebody. You ain't doing nothing for nothing. I ain't doing nothing for nothing. I'm doing it with faith because I believe if you get half of what I'm saying, it's gonna make a big difference. You say, you say, one person, one person surrenders, it was worth it. Watch this. I'm not minimizing what he said because it couldn't be more true. One person surrenders. Watch this. I'm thrilled just to get to sow the seed. Yeah. You might feel like you ain't even hardly hearing it, but it's going to come back to you. Yeah. You can sleep in the night trying to ignore it and get my face out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what night you wake up, I'll be right there. <laughs> well, let me tell you the truth about it. Am I telling the truth, Lee? Are you giving me a penny for being here? Did you cover any of my expenses? Did I just say I'm thrilled to come? They invited. I said I'll be there, but you ain't giving me nothing. Why? I'm already paid in full. Now you know that if you So it actually cost me money. I had to buy my plane ticket. Fly out early this morning, woke up at 3.30, get a shower and catch a plane. Just stand here tonight. Amen. Ain't taking no check home with me. My payday is standing here telling you what I'm convicted by. Come on. Yeah. And believe it, it's the truth because it changed my life forever. Yeah. And if somebody hears it and believes it and it changes your life, that's payday. Yeah, we're walking. Yeah. Yeah. What did Jesus do? 
He despised the shame of the cross, the pain of the cross, and he looked forward to what lied ahead. He looked to the joy that is set before him. He was looking at you and me saved and filled with his spirit. He said, I'll go through whatever it costs to pay for that day to come. Yes. These men are sowing into you. He's sowing into the ministry. Yes. Lee and his guys are sowing into this ministry because we got several things going on here. But it's all the same goal. It's all yes. the same goal. Right? So if I can come and co-labor with them yes. and be out of the mouths of two or more every word is confirmed and established, and I'm just saying the same thing in some different ways that they're saying the same thing in different ways, and all of a sudden somebody goes, I get it. Amen. Yeah. I want that. Yes. Do you see why Jesus said if you come after me? He didn't say pray the sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. Sinner's prayer was created in about 1860. I just checked it out. So I was just say it wasn't on the earth for 100 years, but it has been. About 1860, somebody came up with a tool of the sinner's prayer. And it's not a bad thing. It's just give people the whole message. Right. We're not praying if you die tonight and don't know if you're going to heaven. Pray this prayer. Are you kidding me? That's, that's not my motive. My motive is, why would you live for yourself when we're not created for you? And unless a seed dies and falls to ground, the vines are on. If it dies, it will spring up and bear much fruit. <laughs> so a selfish man can pray to go to heaven. Because he's just praying for what he can get from God. Instead of giving back what was never his. His life. See, the biggest problem on the planet, it ain't politics. It's that every day men wake up and live for themselves when they're made for God's image. And a bigger tragedy is that people in the church do it. And there's hurt, and there's frustration, and there's anger, and there's power play right inside the church. See, I've learned this a long time ago. I'm going to talk really straight to y'all because you're used to it. <laughs> the devil could care less if you're in this program. He could care less if we pray at night, sing all night, do church every day. He could care less if every seat's full. He cares when you shine, when you walk in the light. Amen. He cares when your life starts looking like Jesus. Yep. You, know, you can get swallowed up by religion. You can just do Christian stuff yep. and let that take the place of knowing him and becoming one. Yep. You can just do good Christian deeds. You can travel and preach. You can go on a mission trip. You can feed the poor. They're all Christian things, but your heart could be a mess. You can have anger and frustration and disappointment in there. You can have judgments and critical stuff. All that stuff is supposed to die. I can show you scripture after scripture what this man preached. Scripture where you quoted a ton of scripture. Wow. You said it six years. Amen. You quoted a ton of scripture. Amen. You really did. If you know the word, you know he quoted a ton of scripture. Yeah. yeah. And it's what sanctifies and sets apart, but it's not works. It's not me biting my lips saying, okay, I need to live this. No, I become this. But I recognize that I was never created to be me, myself, and I. I was created to be Christ in me, the hope of glory. The word glory means any manifest, seen attribute of God. The glory of God revealed is the person of God manifested. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. So the Christ in you and me is the hope of the glory of God. What's that mean? The Christ in you and me is the hope of God being seen, known, and realized. Come on. Amen. It's not through theology. It's through our lives lived. Yes, Lord. When we're walking in mercy, when we're making peace, when we're walking in love. Be honest, guys. Yes, Lord. We were brought up to think that's like Sisyphus. <laughs> like that's not even cool. It's not macho. They show the devil in the little cartoons. He's sitting on a guy's shoulder. Then they got an angel. They always got the angel acting like wimpy. Yeah. They got the devil acting all mean. And he even makes a gesture towards the angel. I've never seen a cartoon once and the angel cowered a little. It ain't like that. Nah. But it's to give you that impression that, that the angel represents weakness. <laughs> Secular. It's the world. That the devil's some kind of tough guy. Are you kidding? He's a loser. Oh, he has rebelled against God. He's forever judged and cursed. Forever. Amen. Ever. He's a loser. Come on. Tough guy? Loser. <laughs> so don't you live an ounce of what he is and join his losing. 
Anybody can have an attitude. Anybody can be offended. I've learned that anybody can be angry. We didn't have to stay up late to master those things. Come on. They came with the package. You were angry before you could speak English or whatever language you were born into. You were angry before you even knew or had a clue. They took something. You, you could be playing with another little toddler and you ain't even speaking yet. And you don't even care about that truck until they touched it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as they touched it, you grabbed it. Now you, eh, eh. Yeah. children, it's okay. Hey, come on, learn to share. Be there. Ah. Yeah. You didn't learn that. <laughs> that came with the package. That ain't what God made because He looked down and said it's good. That wasn't in the picture. Everything changed. When man sinned and got separated from his creator, the image got lost, identity got lost, and what was created to love became in need of love. First Timothy 1 5 says the goal of our instruction, the end of the commandment is love. Yep. First Corinthians 13 says if you don't have love, you've got nothing. You can have all the Christian confession you want, but if you don't have love, you got nothing. First John 4 says if you don't love, you don't know God. Now, that doesn't mean you don't see your need for a Savior. That doesn't mean your sins aren't forgiven. That doesn't mean that you aren't sincere about being forgiven. But here's what it means. The goal of our instruction is love. The end result is love. Not heaven when I die. His nature why I live. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hearing that? Come on. He says, Beloved, let us love. This is 1 John 4. Beloved, let us love one another because God is love. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who doesn't love just doesn't know God like he should. Yeah, so the barometer and measuring stick of you knowing God, not saying you believe in Him, knowing Him, yeah, yeah, yeah. is your love. <laughs> so if you're having a hard time loving, then get closer to God. Yeah, and tell Him you want to be everything He created you to be. You don't want to see men through your own eyes. You want to see men through His eyes. And the way Jesus walked in love, the way Jesus lived by the Spirit, the way I want to walk in love and live by the Spirit, Lord. And you get along and you deal with that and you pray about that. Don't ignore that. Because self-centeredness is a wretch. You all have your Bible? Has anybody got Bible? Yeah. Go to James chapter 3. I'm on this thing. I might as well show it to you. Come on. I don't know how many. Is, is there a time? What, what, it's only, it's 8-12. What are we doing? We don't. Amen. Doing stuff. We don't know, you guys got time frames, ministry, you got lights out stuff, you got stuff, right? You got Jesus. You got Jesus. No? Jesus said not today. Are you alright? Flag me if you need to. James chapter 3, I want you to see this. Listen, man. This is a big deal. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me and come after me, you have to deny yourself. Selfishness is a wretch. It gets in the way. That's what permits you to be angry. That's what permits you to be discouraged. That's what permits you to have ideas about other people and judgments and projections and pride and first impressions. Yeah. That's just you weighing man by man. That's just looking through an eye that he never looks through. Come on. Come on, be real with me. Like if somebody does you wrong and you're living done wrong, you're letting them dominate your life and you think you're in control because in your heart you're cutting them off and they're fashioning you the whole time. Come on. Come on. I mean, how cheap is that? You think you're winning because you didn't talk to them for two years? For two years they've owned you. Come on, somebody's got to talk about this stuff. Come on. And you can't find it in Jesus. Could you picture Jesus? He's, he's perfect and pure. He let men hit him. <coughs> Look, you don't even have to be a bad dude. You ain't let people hit you. You're going to find a way to get back. You poke them in the eye with a pencil or something. You ain't going to let them just hit on you over and over. You're going to find a way. I grew up in the city. I know what I'm talking about. And you just got to get through. And you might know you ain't bad enough, but you're going to... You sneak up on somebody. <laughs> we ain't nothing like Jesus growing up, guys. He's doing totally perfect and right. They're criticizing him, judging him, backbiting him. Now he's letting men hit him and spit on him and crucify him. He, he lets them beat him so bad. 
unrecognizable. More and more than any of the sons of men. That means when they were done beating him, he came out looking worse than any man's ever looked at the hands of a man. That's what that means. Why does it say that? Because if that's true, then you couldn't even tell it was Jesus. Why? Why couldn't he just take 39 stripes and some stakes in there? Why did he have to get beat so bad that you couldn't tell it was him? Because when sin got done with Adam in the garden, he didn't look anything like he was created to be. He totally lost his appearance. So Jesus came and gave up his visage and his appearance to parallel and pay the price to get the image back inside the people. And we made it all about him blessing us and protecting us instead of us becoming Christ-like. Come on, that's straight. That's it. That's it, man. And that's why it's that way. That's why you're the foreigner against him. You, you can't be somewhat selfish or a little bit selfish. You're selfish or you're not. You can't be a little bit loved. See, we've always said, I love you, I love you. And what we're really saying is, I need you. Dang and we prove that because we have fallouts and issues and unresolved conflicts. And you can even make three babies together and now you can't be in the same room. You can't tell me that's love. You benefited me for a season. You made my boat float. Something. But it ain't love. Because love never fails. Because love doesn't seek its own. And it takes no account of the wrong done to it. Well, if love don't take no account of the wrong done to it, then why are we all busted up by each other? Come on, let me talk plenty. Why are we busted up? And if you don't love, there's one reason, not one of two. You don't know him like you could. So I guess we all have hope to change. So let's just get closer. Let's get alone and say, man, I want to be everything you created me to be. I don't want to play with this thing. I don't want to just live in my own wisdom, in my own opinion. I don't want to just judge what that man's saying and not even have sought you. God, if this is true, reveal. Let me see it in your word. But change my life for your glory. If you get alone and seek him that way, oh my. See, God never made man for himself. Right. You can find it in scripture. You'll see it here in a minute. I'll read it to you. I won't have to explain it much. I already have it taught. There's not an ounce of love and selfishness. And there's not an ounce of selfishness in love. That line that CJ drew tonight is as clean as can be. You don't somewhat love. You don't kind of love. You either love or you don't. Because it's unconditional, it's unwavering. It's not based on what someone can do for you, it's based on how you value them and see them. Amen. So when God saw us in an unlovely state we were living, he didn't see the unlovely state greater than he saw what he created all of us for. That's why Jesus said, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. He's beat beyond description. He's healing the sick and raising the dead and multiplying food. Love is pretty amazing. If that's the best he could say is forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. You think he, you think he'd have said, are you kidding me? These are a bunch of idiots. I've done miracle after miracle and raising the dead. They're releasing Barabbas. He's a killer. I'm raising the dead. He's causing conspiracy. I'm bringing peace. And they want to, they want to crucify me. If they didn't get it by now, they ain't never going to get it. These people are idiots. Yeah, yeah they did not say that. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's true. Yeah. He don't know how to do that. Preacher said one time, you know Jesus loves us because he could have come off the cross. Holy Spirit spoke to me when I heard the preacher say, he said, don't you ever preach that. I couldn't have come off the cross. Love never wavers. It doesn't change its mind. Oh, he said, don't you ever preach I could have come off the cross. Not even in the equation. Because love never fails. <laughs> so if I have that value, then I have that value. Whether I know it or not, does the value change? Nope. Forgive them, Father, they... No, 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 no. So he came as light. So the blind can see. He, he wants to give sight to the blind. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on. Yes. Watch this. Come on. The selfish thing, man, I'm telling you. 
That's so good. If you get saved, you come to this program and get saved. Get saved to become the man he paid for you to be. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Don't get saved yeah. just to get forgiven, which is a big deal. Forgiveness is a big deal. I'm not making light of it. But it's just the first step. Forgiveness qualifies me to get to him. Oh. This is the first step. We stop with forgiveness. We pray a prayer to get forgiven, and now our name's in a book called Life. Now we try to get through life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. I've been around us for 29 years. But that's what we think. No, it's not the truth. He modeled the life that we were all created for. Or he had never said, follow me. I can show you scriptures. Two places where a Christian never complains because of his perspective. <laughs> Because of his selfless perspective, because he's seeking first the kingdom, he don't ever complain. Because when he complains, what he said is, my preference is Lord. My preference is greater than my calling. And I got issues. <laughs> you want to get rid of your life subscription to issues? You want to cancel that life subscription to issues? Big feelings. Who wants to really read it anyway? Oh my God. Come on, come on. I don't want to fuck her at the same time. You know what the Bible says in uh, Hebrews 12 3? It says, Consider him. Who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, lest you be weary and discouraged in your soul. Watch. For you haven't yet shed your blood in your fight against sin. When I was a kid, nobody ever told me I was in a fight against sin and that I could lose my life standing my ground for righteousness. They just said, if you didn't know where you're going when you die, play this prayer. Yeah. Nobody ever told me I was that sanctified, but now I stepped into a fight, <laughs> fight the good fight of faith to live sanctified oh. and expose sin for what it is, and if my life lived holy could compel people to come to him. Yes. Oh. Now when you see me, you see the Father. Amen. That the rule of this world cometh that has nothing in me, because oh. the only thing he works with is what you give him. Hmm. Nobody told me none of that until I got in that book. Yeah. And then I started to realize, whoa, now I see what he paid for. You did not just pray a prayer to get forgiven. Mm -hmm. You're back on track. You're back in the army of God. It's just no one on. enlisted in this army and tangles himself ever again in the affairs of this life. And you ought to endure hardship as a good soldier. Why? Because it's not about me anymore. Amen. When you squeeze an orange, what do you get? Orange you see how you said orange juice? You didn't just say juice. Nobody said juice. You said orange juice. Why? Squeeze the orange. Duh. <laughs> so if it was apple juice, is that weird? If you squeeze an orange, you get apple juice. Is that weird? Yeah. Why is it weird when you squeeze a Christian and get everything but Christ? <laughs> That should be really weird. <laughs> hey, Christmas juice. Because if I'm seeking first the kingdom and you're squeezing me, guess what's coming out? Jesus. Christ is coming out, man. So if you do me wrong and I'm living done wrong, then I don't understand what I'm preaching. If you did me wrong and I'm just living done wrong, that's my story. We don't know what they did to me. You don't know how long it's hard, man. You've got to hold up so long. How much are you supposed to put up with? You better be glad God ain't talking like that. <laughs> Because if the woman created us is thinking like that, we're done. There ain't nobody in this room that has hope. <coughs> if God's ready to grow weary and well doing, if he's giving up on, come on. Were you telling me I'm supposed to just, well, I ain't going to be nobody's door. I wonder if Jesus said, I ain't being nobody's door, man. Ain't nobody walking on me. Come on. I let no man hit me. <laughs> this gospel's amazing. Amen. Amen. Because what it reveals is a love that's so powerful and so awesome. Yeah. And it's everything but wimpy. Come on. Yeah. And that idea in the world is that it's wimpy. Yeah. <laughs> Growing up, that good is sissified. You got to be hard, tough, and angry, and curse a little bit. Be rough. Let me leave this to you all. So if anybody didn't know where James was and you had to use your little concordance, you should have found it by now. <laughs> Y'all there? 
If you ain't there, we don't give up hope on anybody, but if you ain't there, uh, you're all alright. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who's wise and understanding among you? Question mark. Like, who really knows what they're talking about? Who do you know to listen to? Who's wise? And who's understanding? Let them show that their works are done in the meekness of wisdom. In other words, let their life reveal. The way they live their life should be the testimony of whether they know what they're talking about. Come on. Right? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Now watch. Fruit. Yeah. You know them by their fruit. And in this the Father's will please that you bear much fruit. And that your fruit remain. remain. And then guess what he's going to do? Trim and prune and clip so you laden with more fruit. <laughs> and he's going to keep clipping and pruning until you're just a fruit pestle. You just, <laughs> you're just carrying peace and joy and mercy and tender love and kindness. And you just people are eating of you and getting satisfied. Yeah? yeah. yeah. I can tell you several. You know how we don't love God first but see his first love? I can tell you several testimonies where people in my life saw God's first love through my life because I was in a position where they knew if I didn't change and I responded this way, it's the way he loves and only he can love. And it took them straight to him. So God gave me the honor of walking in his unfailing love in the way that they saw his first love and fell in love with who he was. That sure beats being hurt, angry, frustrated, got a story, need counsel, and I can't believe they did that to me. A little more guarded than I used to be. You gotta be careful how close you let people get, you know. <laughs> Where did we get that language? That sounds like self-preservation. Why are we so touchy? Why am I so vulnerable if I'm surrendered and I already died? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. So if I'm defending something, it just is going to be subject to be overrun and overtaken. But if he's my rock and he's my defense, Amen. and I ain't got a wall around me, come on. Come on. I'm just going to live that way for the rest of my life. I wish somebody would just come right on with me. <laughs> Say, I'm all in, draw that line. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Who's wise and understanding? Let him show by the good conduct of his life. As, as, as works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Uh-oh. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, well, don't boast and lie against the truth. In other words, don't call it normal. Don't just say everybody's got it. Don't just say, you know, well, it's just God loves me anyway. Don't boast and lie against it. Don't appear to be something you know you're not in your heart. In other words, deal with it. Get along with God. Get in prayer. Confide. Talk to somebody. Man, i got this selfish thing. I don't want it. Confess your faults one another. Pray for one another. You might be healed. But don't ignore it. Yeah. And don't just appear to be okay when you're convicted by it. Yeah. And a good sign of it is the way you conduct your life, right? The works are done make this wisdom. Like if you're having fault outs, you get insecure, you, you get first impressions, frustrated people, you gravitate to certain people and avoid other people because they get under your skin. I'm talking about getting new skin. Yeah. I'm talking about looking through different eyes. <laughs> I'm talking about not judging the room for what your eyes see, but seeing what God has always seen in this room. Amen. Never again judging a man according to the flesh, 2 Corinthians 5. But seeing a man for what he's created for and what his potential is. Do you understand that's why I got in the plane this morning and flew down here? Amen. Like, like it, look, it didn't cost me that much. But in the sense of time, I got up. I love what I get to do. Do I look tired? Do I look like bored? Do I, or do I look serious? Okay. So I got up this morning at 3 30, got a shower, got my car, and drove to an airport to catch a six o'clock flight. Had a long way over in Dallas, so I get down here and be here for tonight. And I'll be here tomorrow and Sunday and get back on a plane and head back home. Why? Because I know who you are. Amen. And I believe every word that I'm preaching. And I know your value. So I'm excited to be here and nothing about it feels like sacrifice. And one of the biggest paradoxes is people in ministry are saying, thank you so much, oh, thank you for coming. And I'm like, I'm having the time of my life. What are you thanking me for? Thank you for coming? I, I, I want to be here. Like, I don't need to be here. This isn't my payday. You're not putting bread on my table. I'm here because I know who you are, and I believe a thousand percent everything I'm preaching. And I believe we all matter that much. And I understand this life that you all come from, right? 
the lies, and the regrets, and the memories, and the condemnation, and the stuff, and how it tries to get your heart entangled and hard and snared and all kinds of stuff. And the greatest thing you can do is say, wait, no matter where I've been or what I've done, don't say it can't be this easily. I'm going to just put it all away and say, you know what? None of that is who God ever created me to be. I was living all that in a lie and deception, man. I've cut down the middle tonight. CJ got up here and cut. This man come up and he cut right on the same line. He just pushing this thing apart. I've been made for God, made for his image. He loves me. He, he remembers my lawless deeds no more. So why would I regret another day? If he forgets my sin, I don't move forward. Yes, and I'm going to go after God. You get water baptized, die in the likeness of his death, so you can raise in the newness of life. Yes. So you die to sin once for all, everything that sin represents memory, stain, sting, smell, desire. And you come up a new creation. Come on. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. It's more again, man. If you guys are good ministers and leaders like me, I'll hold on until every bubble stops. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Samson thing comes on you. You can be a I'm just going to hold you down. You ain't getting up. Because that Samson thing's why I just hold you until every bubble stops. We time it. 40 seconds after the last convulsion, we got it. <laughs> you know what? It's usually about four hard convulsions. Get that late last one. 30 seconds after that, you bring them up. <gasps> New life. <laughs> It's a sign of dying. Yes, Lord. And you can't possibly live unless you die. Because you can't put this new wine into the old skin. You gotta make the wine skin. You gotta get new motives, new purpose, new reason for being, new identity, new value. You gotta put off the old and put on the new. Yeah, and then that wine. Now you just pouring out new wine. Because if not, it's bursting and leaking on the ground. And then you always need to fill. You always need to fill back up. I thought he anointed our heads and our cups runneth over. Yeah, that don't sound like a dry cup to me. See, you're not supposed to leak through cracks. You're supposed to leak on the world around you. Isaiah said it this way, you'll fill the thirsty and flood the dry ground. You'll always have something to give. Growing up, my dad was alcoholic. It never did me right. Did my mama wrong. That could be an excuse if you let it. If I'm finding my dad through my daddy, of course I'm thirsty because he's a dry cup. So I'm trying to find value through somebody that doesn't have a clue who he is. But because he's my daddy, he's supposed to love me. Yeah. And then if he can't love me, I mustn't be lovable. Dang. And all that crazy stuff we start rationalizing. <laughs> it couldn't be farther from the truth. The truth is I'm trying to drink out of a dry cup. Yep. Of course I'm thirsty. Yeah. I found one that said if you take one drink, one drink is a well spring yeah. And if I take one drink, I'll never thirst, thirst again. Never. You know why I flew down here? Because I ain't thirsty. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never thirst again. I found myself in him. And I'm calling you all to it, man. Watch this. This is the word of the Lord. Watch. This is the word of the Lord. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, don't boast and lie against the truth. Look, this wisdom, what wisdom? Self-centeredness. This wisdom never came from above. It did not descend from above. Look. It's earthly, sensual, and demonic. So what happened is, love got perverted, and when God got separated from man and man from God through sin, love got perverted and became self-centered. So Adam didn't just sin, he took on the nature of God's very own enemy through deception, through treason, and he became like the enemy. So the enemy said, okay, God made man for his image, I'll just twist him up into my image. Come on. Yeah, that's the battle. 
That's the fight of faith. It says the, the devil's roaming around like a roaring lion. He's just roaming around like a roaring lion. Seeking, seeking. He's just looking who he can devour. You resist him standing steadfast in the faith. He didn't say rebuke him all night long and by the devil. I would you see what happens when you give a man a microphone? He will manifest. When you give a man a microphone, he will manifest. Don't give the devil a microphone. Don't give him a platform. Come on. He's a cut off withering branch coming to nothing. You submit to God. That's your resisting. Right? So when he when he's trying to take you down and he's looking who he can devour, you resist him standing steadfast in the faith. All that means is you continue in the truth of who you've become through Jesus Christ. Period. You're not for sale. You've been bought with a price. You get it? Yeah. Watch this. Earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist. Look what happens. Confusion and every evil thing is present. You know how people walk around rebuking the devil? You know how people get hurt? And they start praying because they're hurt. Not because they care for the people that hurt them. And I'm going to teach you something tonight. We don't even realize the paradox here. Because we're supposed to be sanctified and set apart. In the world and not of the world. Never again conform to the world but transform. Because we're thinking like we've never thought before. Watch this. My wife prayed to, for, to God for 13 years for me to change. And I never changed. You know what happened after 13 years? She got bitter, angry, pumped her fist to God and said, I prayed to you for 13 years. 13 years I prayed to you for him to change. And you've done nothing. You've allowed me and these children to go through hell. And you've done nothing. I don't need you either. She's walked off in darkness and deception. See, pain understands her language. About six and a half, seven months later, God delivered her. She's on the bathroom floor crying. I had been saved and changed. And she's fighting and living in guilt and stuff because of her decisions. And when God delivered her, she's crying in a fetal position. It's a beautiful story. I won't get into it right now tonight. But he hovered over her because he wanted to make peace with that little lamb. And he said, you know, Kim, it's true. You prayed for 13 years for me to change. But you bound my hands and kept me from moving because you never one time prayed because you loved him. You just knew if I changed him, your day would go better. Yeah. Kim, you were reduced to another hurting wife that prays. It wasn't <laughs> love and mercy. It was all because of pain. Mm. Mm. That's a revelation. Because 99.9% .9 of the time we pray, it's because of the problem. And we're praying because of what frustrates us, what hurt us, what broke us. And we ain't even crying for people. We just busy crying because of people. And then we call it that prayer. And that's just your hurt and self-centeredness with spiritual language. He said, I ain't changing him for that motive and leaving you there. So he touched me apart from her prayers. And he was trying to tell her, honey, your prayers don't even make it to my throne. Because they're all self-centered. And you know if I change him, your day is a lot easier. How's that for sober? And God loves her so much. And to be changed me through that, he's teaching her that that's okay. And now I'm changed and she gets her cake and eats it too. And stays self-centered and vulnerable. So I still have the ability to break her. Here's what you need to understand about me. And I ain't popping off. I've been in this thing 29 years now. I'm very confident my speech. Like you guys don't owe me a thing. There's no way you can hurt me or break my heart. You can't kill me because I'll never die anyway. I don't need your attention. I don't need your affection. I want to be friends. I want to co-labor in my arms. But I am not codependent or dependent on you appreciating me. My identity comes this way. So now there's no strings attached this way. So now I don't even have expectations on you. So you can't even hurt me or break my heart anymore. So I did not wake up today for you to love me. I woke up to be more like him. So my day's already a win. Because I'm going to walk in the light. I see he's in the light. Ain't that something scripture says it's possible for you to walk in the light as he's in the light? Not somewhat like as he's in the light. I'll close with this and we'll, we'll pray. We'll see what God wants to do here. <laughs>
This wisdom doesn't come from above. It's earthly, sensual, and demonic, and where envy and self-seeking is, confusion and everything is present. You could be in the, de in the bedroom crying, hurt with pain, mad at your spouse, mad at your best friend, just mad at your pastor, just mad at somebody, and you say, God, you need to knock them off their high horse. God, I can't believe you let them do that to me. God, you need to bring change to this situation. And you're doing all this thing, and you're praying, and you're actually in the landing strip for confusion in every evil work. And you could be rebuking the devil, and the whole time, you're his invite. Mm. Read your Bible. I'm human. You can't show your blue in the face. It's the motive in your heart that allows him to not leave. Because it's self <laughs> Whoever saw Jesus having a fallout, sitting on the Mount of Olives at daybreak, bummed out. <laughs> Peter wrapped his arm around, Lord, what's the matter? Don't know, what's the matter with me? You're not in my shoes and you don't understand. <laughs> But Lord, but not that I don't need a sermon from you, Peter. But Lord, I've never seen you like this. You don't understand what it's like in my shoes. I'm pure every day. I'm doing perfect. The men just bippering and backbiting. Sometimes they just wear you thin, Peter, okay? Sometimes you just need your space. Sometimes you just need to chill a little. Stay back. In fact, just, Peter, I need my space right now. Okay? Uh, the last thing I need is you to try to preach to me right now, Peter. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous putting those words in his mouth. Why aren't they ridiculous when they're in arms? We're made for his image. And as he is, so are we in this. See, we never learn those things from him. Did we ever learn those things from him? No. Then where have we learned? Ain't that so? That's why we got to put that thing off. That's why there's a line down the middle, right? Come on. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is what we were created for, guys. <laughs> Let's look at the last part. <laughs> but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. First pure, that's the key. Isn't it? My reason for being here, I promise you, is pure. <laughs> Nobody can say, well, you know, it ain't like he's coming here for nothing. I mean, I'm sure he's getting fat a little bit. He's probably getting a little fat, and you know. <laughs> no, you just get that way, man. Yeah, it is. And all of a sudden, it takes the edge off of sincerity. And all of a sudden, we see what I'm doing as a business or a way of living or under my key. You know, it costs me to come down here. Right. Not that much. It costs Jesus a whole lot, but I don't think he feels like he paid much. Mm -hmm. I think love is that great. Amen. Amen. And nobody took his life and freely laid it down. So I think flying down here to talk to you guys is probably easily worth it. Yeah? Amen. And get nothing in return except for the pleasure of just having a time with you guys. Amen. Amen. And remembering your faces and praying and believing God to do a mighty work right here in Avenue. Amen. That's why I'm here. Watch this. Because it's first pure. Let's not think we can't have pure hearts. Blessed is the, blessed are the, for they shall see. If it was impossible to have a pure heart, he would make promises to the pure heart. He says in Titus, to the pure, all things are pure. Yeah? Yeah. It's first pure, he'll never forget that. No string attached, man. We've been jaded. There's something in it for everybody. People never really mean what they say. We've been hurt. Back then, so many times on the street, guys, come on the lives we're living with survival at come on. best. Come on. At the expense of everyone around us and ourselves. Amen. The only reason people think life is a grind is because they're living it outside of why they're here. Mm. Why would God fill your tank to travel on a road you were never created to be on? Yeah. No wonder people are tired. Amen. No wonder they want to die. No wonder they can't go on. The only reason you can ever do like that is because you live in life every day outside of why you're here. The serving, giving, loving thing is so invigorating it's ridiculous. The making it not about yourself is the only freedom I've ever known. Yeah. You'll never be free if you're self-centered. You're already in a prison. It's a life sentence. Yeah. Why don't you get out, man? Put away self-centeredness and get out of that thing. See, if, if I need something for me, I'm 
only as good as you do it. Yeah. Yeah. If I wake up for a better reason, then I'm already okay. Amen. Do you get it? Yeah. So I'm done being let down. I'm done being hurt. I'm 29 years in the ministry. Guys, I didn't come to you jaded. I'm <coughs> chipped away at it. I don't have stories. <laughs> How are you going to get to me when he's already got to me? <laughs> It's pure, it's peaceable, it's gentle, it's willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruit. This is the wisdom of God. It's without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. I've got one more scripture for you. Blessed are the See, the sons of God isn't some new confession on the earth. It's an expression on the earth called peacemaking. Amen? Amen. 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 I got some time with you guys tomorrow morning, I think, and, and right in the afternoon and Sunday, at least with me and my house. I'm not sure about you guys, CJ's guys, but... I'll be pouring out a lot more, doing some praying and some talking about some things. I know we said a lot tonight. I want to ask you this, and I want to ask you from my heart without music, without emotions. Somehow, sometimes, somehow, some way this happens. People get in these programs for a lot of different reasons. But they've never really given their life to God. And I'm not talking about backslid. I'm not talking about recommitment. What I just preached, that thing you preach, man, flying, choo, choo. People always feel like they need to be rededicated. The your order is your heart before God. You don't always have to come to an order call and be rededicated. You just say, duh, man, I was muddy in that lineup. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, CJ. <laughs> right? You don't always need an order call. But if you've never been born again, you know that's you if you've never been born again. Man, I don't care if it's one person. I'll take the time to ask you to be bold and come up here. I mean, we'll celebrate the freak out. You know, we want you saved. Yes, yes. But if you've never been born again and you're in this program and you heard this message and you're going, man, you know what? I need to be humble and proud of myself. That's why my attitude is the way it's been. That's why I'm frustrated. That's why I'm in unforgiveness. That's why I can't forget what they did. I want to put all that down and I want to trust God and give what was never mine back to Him so His yeah. life can live in me. <laughs> That to me is truly the more again. So if there'd be anybody before we close in a certain line of prayer, I just want to make room for that. If there's anybody here, you say, man, I've never sincerely been born again and died to myself and gave my life to him. And I, I didn't talk to Lee about this, but I'm sure we can get you baptized. I'll hold you under until everybody. <laughs> anybody, don't hesitate. If that's you, you already know it's you. Why don't you hesitate? in a moment like this and after what you just heard. Yeah. So just just get saved, man. Come on up here so we can pray with you. And then we'll water baptize you as soon as we can, the best we can. I wouldn't feel like I'm making this offer if there wasn't anybody. Yeah. I just feel that in my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Ever like giving your life to Jesus? No, you would not. What's your name? Michael. Who else is going to join Michael? My mom. Don't sit in your chair if that's you. My mom. Is there anybody else in it? It doesn't have to be near Mike. It could be any, any, any of the men. 
Maybe that's on your life, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe we would put this on your life. And maybe God's saying, I want to do such a work in you that people notice yes, yeah. and follow yeah. and become something that they see in you. Yeah. And I, actually, it's a calling for all of us. Yeah. But actually, it's, it's probably something I've noticed in, in my heart. Leadership. Yeah. 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 Is there anybody else before we pray? Is this awesome or what? Yeah. 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 Amen. I'm so proud of you guys. Amen. Yeah. So the reason you came up is because you heard something that you heard it, didn't you? Listen, your life is worth living. Your value is precious to God. Jesus would have never died on that cross. Amen. And he didn't just die so you'd be forgiven and go to heaven. No. He died so heaven could come into you. Amen. God's nature. And you need to begin to teach you through his word by Holy Spirit what it is that he looks like in you. And I'm telling you, it's freedom. When you get rid of yourself, when you deny yourself the best you understand you begin to actually walk in that place, I'm telling you, self-centeredness is a prison. I was just in a teen ranch, teen boys, 14 to 17. I had 35 boys for the whole week. It was so fun. 14 of them weren't saved. By the second session, all 14 of them got saved. Yeah. They cried. They wanted to go to the airport to say goodbye to me. I guess I felt like their grandpa to them or something. Like that. <laughs> came and loved on us. But you know what? The Lord had me the whole way to teach to them and do this message how self centeredness is a prison. And, and it is because you're bound to yourself. He says, unless a seed dies and falls to the ground, You'll buy the love. But if you would die, fall to the ground, you spring up. You bear much fruit. Yeah. You see? So we have to die in order to live. This word of baptism is a big deal. So we, we baptize you in the likeness of his death, which is sin. He died to sin once for all. The life he lives, he lives unto God. It's Romans 6.10. And then 11 says, Likewise, you reckon yourselves dead and deed unto sin. Josh. Come up alive under God in Christ Jesus. So what's that mean? That means old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. So it's a sign of death, burial, and resurrection. What are, what are we dying and burying? Our old life, everything we've ever done and everything done against us. What are we burying? Down into the tomb. What are we coming up in? New life. Jesus Christ. Amen. Make sense? Amen. I'm going to pray with you guys, okay? I want you to pray with me. This is... This is a simple kind of model prayer, contact point of faith to where. So you all, you believe in Jesus. You believe he's the Lord, son of God, that he died on the cross. And that three days, God raised him from the dead. Do you all believe that? Yes. And through his shed blood, you guys completely get forgiven. Yes. Watch this. Of everything you've ever done. Now, some people won't forgive you for a while. Some people may never choose to forgive you. There might be some bridges, unfortunately, that seem burned. But let all that with God. you got to know you're forgiven where he's concerned. And you all have access to him. You can all be changed. You can all be empowered. And then you can begin to believe for those things that you care about. And I'll see him. Build plenty of riches in my life. Amen? Yeah. Things that we thought were unfixable. I've seen you fix. Amen. But the biggest thing you want to do is give back to him what was never sold in yours in the first place. And that's your life. You ready to do that right now when we pray? You all in? Is there anybody that's going to join him yet? For some reason I feel like I'm waiting for one person. I was just trying to pray and I got this one person hit my heart. Please don't stay in your chair if you know that's you. Just be bold and run up here. We can go solve you for waiting. Just get up here. I'm just ready to pray to them. Who saw I was ready to pray? Y'all in? Y'all in? I was just ready to pray. I felt like I needed to get more and more person from here. Y'all ready? Hallelujah. Yeah. No, it's good. Listen, what's your name? Look, look at me, buddy. No, it's okay. No, look at me. It's okay. You take a deep breath, all right? Yes. No, I need you to look at me. It's okay. No, this is good. There's freedom in this. Oh, go on. You look at me. There's freedom in this. Yes. Jesus loves you so much. I'm not going to stand here.
together and say, this is going to be the hardest thing in your life. Yeah. It's actually going to be easier than you realize. Amen. Because I believe your heart's been crying out for a long time. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And I think it's been overcomplicated in your mind. Yeah. And your heart's been purer than you realize. But because you haven't believed that, it's affected you in certain ways. God sees your heart, and I'm seeing it right now. You've actually had a hard cry for help, for freedom, and for salvation for a while. Don't make it harder than it is. This thing is easy, and it's here tonight for you. Okay? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's been that you haven't been saved. I think you've had a heart to be saved. I think you've been believing some wrong things. Amen. Yeah. And, and that one more, I'm pretty sure it was you, that God just wanted this moment. These guys are helping you. They're speaking to you. And I'm just another source of voice saying, listen, God loves you. Amen. Lives inside of you. Wants to shine through you. Amen. It's just that simple. Okay? You got nothing to prove. Come on. Amen. Amen. Just the joy of God. Come on. Amen. Amen. It's not even about family. It's not even about family. Come on. That's a relief. It ain't even about family. It's about becoming. And I believe you have inside you the heart that it takes to walk you through. Yes. The enemy would love you to question your heart and get you to overcomplicate things and feel bad about things that aren't even in here. Amen. Yeah. Make sense? Okay. Y'all ready, guys? Yes. Yeah. Say this. Say, Father, I'm coming to you tonight. Thanking you for loving me because I believe you love me. That's why you sent Jesus. Jesus, I want to thank you for hanging on the cross, for taking my sin, my shame, my pain, and taking it all away. I receive your forgiveness tonight. And Father, I believe you are forgiving me. Make me a brand new creature. Put your life inside of me. Put your wisdom in me. I want to live your ways all the days of my life. Receive me as your son and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your salvation. I'm never looking back. I'm moving forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. So you just had an understanding to desire to know. That's a good thing. Amen? Yes, We're destroyed for the lack of knowledge. If we can get the knowledge, we can stop a lot of destruction. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, there's some things we need to preach this weekend. But for now, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good night. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, this thing is true. Just keep this as a foundation and search it out. Uh, let me quote something for you. Second, uh, 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 Colossians 2, or 3. Let's do Colossians 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, don't lie to one another since you put off the old man and his deeds. See, not everybody's taught this way. Not everybody's taught this line that I keep mentioning that I saw CJ present, which was exciting to me because it's a line. You, you just have to understand, and I know he's just presenting that tonight, so I'm not saying he doesn't teach this. You just have to understand, you can't just live that because you choose to. You become that on the inside. You get alone with God. You have communion, fellowship. You understand that you're one with him, that he made you for his image, and that he's willing to empower your willingness. And, and, and because I want to love, 
He's going to start showing me what that looks like. Convictions. You talked about that tonight. Convictions. All of a sudden I get convictions. That means to shine light upon. Now I see these things. Go, oh man, you had to create me for more than this. Or wow, this wasn't in you, Jesus. And all of a sudden you start putting that stuff off. But watch this. We don't lie to one another because we put off the old man and his deeds. I don't think we teach this stuff. I think we're trying to get people saved to go to heaven. But watch the next verse. And you've put on the new man. Who's he? Renewed in knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. Who's the new man? In agreement with the image. Let us make man for our image. What got lost through sin? The image. The image. What did Jesus pay to restore? The image. The image. We turned it into a trip to heaven when we died. Mm. Instead of heaven coming into us when we live. That's why there's new life in Jesus Christ. That's why we put off the old. That's more than forgiveness, guys. Put off the old. Put on the new. See, we were all, Romans 5 makes it clear, we were all born into Adam. And you must be born. We turn that into something that benefits me. Like heaven when I die, instead of something that changes me right now. Don't ever forget that. You have access to God. If you ever feel like you can't approach Him, I'm telling you it's a lie. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You say, yeah, but I messed up. Okay, so run to Him. Amen. Don't run from Him. Don't ignore. Don't pull away. Usually in a church and in a ministry, when somebody starts <coughs> pulling away, something's wrong. <coughs> right? Don't ever get that Adam syndrome where you're naked and hiding from the one that Father shot. Run to him. Run to him. So if there's anything that you feel like is keeping you from communing with him, praying to him, talking to him, I'm telling you, it's a flat out lie from hell. You have access to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. If your conscience violates you, you just deal with your conscience. And get your heart realigned and get straight to him. But I wouldn't wait to try to lie. I'd just get to him. Amen. Father, I'm going through it right now. I know you love me. I don't want to use you in a way to enable me to stay the same. But I want change. Amen. But I got this going on. And this and start letting him father you and talk things out with him. But never run from him. Amen. Always run to him. Amen. 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 The last thing I want to encourage everybody in this program. What you started out to do. Stay in this thing and finish, not for honor's sake, but because the goal isn't that you never use again. The goal is that you become the men you were created to. Yes. There's no. And a lot of times people say, well, I think I'm good. I don't think I'll go back to that life. We're not. Our highest goal isn't that you never use again. There's a thing in AA called a dry drunk. So you don't drink, but you're the same person. So you don't use, but you're the same person. Mm. The highest goal of a recovery center that spirit filled isn't just that you never go back and use again. It's that you become the men that God yeah. created you to be. And if you become those men, you'll wonder why you used. Yeah. You'll just wonder why. Because you'll see different. There's desires that were in my life before I was saved that I know were there, but I can't even relate to them because of what I see now. The truth has made me. Free. Free. Father, I bless this house. I bless these ministries. I bless these leaders, God. Yes. Leaders, I, I, I know you might not, you know, I just feel this. I don't feel this often, but, and this might have to do with your heart, Lee. I know you're pulling on this, but leaders, I'm not, I'm not saying I have a higher ranking or anything, but I feel like God wants to, really does want to impart something. If the leaders of these ministries just raise your hands to God right now, I feel like I want to pray. I'm not even opening my eyes. I just feel this in my heart. Father, I thank you. You just empower these leaders with discernment, with wisdom, with understanding, God, in a special and unique way. And God, I just thank you that you empower them to fulfill every desire that's in their heart in serving these men and, and overseeing this ministry. I pray that these ministries would bring so much glory to you and your name. God, I pray that none of these men would ever lack wisdom. The women that are involved would never lack wisdom. That they'd always have an answer in due time and in the moment necessary. That God, we would see your hand of faithfulness and learn to just trust you in the midst of it all. But God, I am thanking you for raising up a room of leaders that lead 
in Christ Jesus by your spirit and from your love. Father, I just thank you that their families are benefiting and, and even more experiencing the love of God than ever before. And that the thing they're living is the thing they're imparting. And I pray, Lord God, all the way through their lives, they see this as the tone, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So I bless them, God. I thank you for your hedge of protection around them. And I thank you for life in the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. I don't know, what am I, who's, is somebody closing out or do you want me to just say closed out or what? We just done? Okay guys, we love you. If I see you again this weekend, I guess I'll see you guys. So bless you all. Thanks for coming. Hug somebody. Make a friend.